Both Ernst Jünger and Julius Evola wrote extensively about war. Each of them served as officers during the First World War. Jünger for the, the German army as an infantry officer and Evola for the Kingdom of Italy as an artillery officer. And one of the things that's consistent in Jünger's writing is the necessity for individual sacrifice for victory on the battlefield, and, and really by extension, sacrifice which propels the collective group forward, whether it's the rise of civilizations, constructing empires. It's built off the backs of the toil and sacrifice of the people of that civilization. It's, it's built off of blood, sweat, and sacrifice. And, you know, whether you read his, his uh, World War I memoir, Storm of Steel, in which Jünger was wounded 14 times during the First World War, he watched countless friends die in battle. He would have near-death experiences where artillery shells would go off feet away from him, blowing him back, or uh, wounds, gunshot wounds, or, you know, at one time he even had a, uh, a bullet pierced through his helmet and actually hit his head, but it hit at an angle in which it didn't enter his skull. So you have all these, all these near-death experiences, and instead of sort of focusing on those experiences as negatives, Jünger almost sees them as, as necessary, and he, he celebrates the individual sacrifice of the soldier on the battlefield. You know, he, he honors his comrades' dedication to the mission, which was the war, despite all the tragedy and all the horrible conditions. Uh, trench warfare was horrendous. You have uh, wet trenches, so you, you were never dry, you were never really sleeping because of the noise or the stress or just having to constantly be working, digging, digging foxholes or preparing or whatever. So you were really talks about the, the sacrifice of the individual in warfare and the necessity for this sort of spirit. In uh, his essay on pain, he writes about pain as, as a sort of threshold or a, um, a, a means of, of identifying man's, man's like status, the, the level of existence is based upon how much pain he can endure. And it's quite interesting because Jünger is uh, a big, you know, a, a big, I guess, student, you could say, of Nietzsche. You know, he, he, read, he read like, Thus Spoke Zarathustra and the Will to Power during his time on the fronts in, in World War I. And a big part of, of Nietzsche's philosophy is amor fati, the love of one's fate, even in situations where you're, you're, you're undergoing extremely horrible conditions, you have to find, you have to find uh, that golden path within, within that struggle. And on the other hand, with Evola, in uh, books like Metaphysics of War, he sort of writes about the necessity for spiritual struggle, and that the war is... Of, of higher ideals are fought uh, on spiritual grounds. So where a lot of wars nowadays are fought on material basis for material gains, he sees the warrior as one who doesn't just fight for the material, but almost fights for the sake of war, like war for war's sake, war to, go, to cultivate that sort of inner virility of man. And of course, modern warfare has lost a lot of the art of, of old warfare. You know, like back when warfare was an art when you had to learn the way of the bow and the way of the sword or horsemanship and now everything's so mechanized you really you really don't have the warrior so much as you have the soldier nowadays somebody that fills a a role that doesn't really take that much time to develop and and, and war has really lost its 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 art form right and you know in in books like the metaphysics of war Evola sort of delves into these different warrior cultures and what propelled them forward. For example, the Romans literally had a cult of victory. To appease the gods was to win in battle, was to defeat their enemies. That was proof of their sort of position as the chosen people, right? And sort of similarly, when we talk about material war, which is sort of the wars that are fought today, even though we try to moralize war with a good or bad guy. It's all really oftentimes fought over the material. And 
you know, Junger sort of talks about this. He talks about the bourgeois mindset. See, in, in, in bourgeois culture, the ultimate good is comfort, security, and the prolonging of life. So the bourgeois doesn't have it within his, his mindset to fight war for war's sake. He fights war only for the material. However, because the bourgeois has an aversion to, to risk, an aversion to danger, they have to come up with the sort of moral justifications for war. We are the good guys. We're fighting for freedom or whatever, right? And this is because the bourgeois doesn't want to fight. You know, you have the song Senator's Son, um, which, which sort of talks about, it's, it, you know, it's about the Vietnam War and how these senators who were essentially picking the fight, who, who, who were voting for these wars to happen, it wasn't their sons. It wasn't them going out into the battlefield. And this is the bourgeois mindset. The bourgeois does not want to actually go out there and, and deal with the elemental danger of war. So I think that there's, a, there's sort of a congruence with Junger and Evola's philosophy on war. And you know, with Junger specifically, if you read like The Worker or Der, Der Arbeiter, he, he sort of is painting the picture for a future. You know, he can, kind of calls it the worker state, where societies are built up by individuals who are willing to sacrifice at a moment's notice for the greater collective victory. And like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities with Junger and Evola's views on war and their views on on sort of the catalysts for virility and strength in man. And I think Junger especially does a good job of not glorifying war. He doesn't he doesn't paint this picture of you know this great this great uh sort of moralization that we, we think of, like I said, like fighting for freedom or, or uh, the defense of war. Like, Junior doesn't sugarcoat it. And I don't think Evola does either, but he does try to paint this picture of higher forms of warfare, like the holy war. Fighting for, for war's sake, fighting to prove a race or a culture's superiority over another. And of course, you can get into some dangerous grounds when you start talking like that. However, there is something to think about. Because every, every great civilization was built upon warfare. No civilization could flourish without having to conquer other peoples and triumph in battle. So sacrifice was necessary and warfare was necessary. If we think about all the goods we have in modern living in the developed world, it was all built upon the, the death and bloodshed of the past of our ancestors. And this reality, that the lives we live and the comfort we have is built off the backs of, of men who, who, who engage in, 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 in warfare and great bloodshed was necessary to have all our comforts. We sort of forget about that in, in, in this sort of modern world where we don't have to face the realities of, of, of what is common in nature. Nature is a battle for survival every day. The gazelle, you know, from birth is, is ready to run from whatever predator may be pursuing it. The lion as a cub is being taught by its parents how to kill properly. That's its whole physiological being is, is, is towards survival and is towards warfare and battle. So that's the element of, of life that can't be ignored. And when you start to think of war in, in a sort of different sense, outside the sort of bourgeois outlook, you can... You can start to see it more unfiltered, more raw. I think in seeing this, this sort of unfiltered betrayal of war, you could probably most likely wage it not only more efficiently, but without all these elements which I think sort of convolute what war is. War is terrible. War is 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 horrific. However, I think one of the reasons why warfare becomes so horrific is because people aren't willing to confront the demoralization of war. Like, there's really no such thing as good or bad guys in war, oftentimes. It's literally a struggle for supremacy and a struggle for one collective group over another. And I think appreciating that fact, appreciating the, the truth of war and the reality of war, can allow us to, to get to a point in which you understand the brutality of war while also appreciating 
the, the sort of necessity behind it, necessity to be skilled at waging war. And like I said, it, it kind of goes back to, to, like I said, it's a critique of, of this sort of bourgeois mindset, a big part of Evola's philosophy, um, whether it's, it's you know, Men Among Ruins or Ride the Tiger. It, it's, it's about how in the modern era, in the very materialistic era, you lose a spiritual center for, for a people, for a culture. You lose that spiritual center and everything's based on the material. And when everything starts to be based on the material, then you, you get into, for example, modern politics, how much of it is, is centered around the economy. Like, you see a good politician, not as somebody who, who for example, revels in heroism, or displays heroism, or displays that, that virility of man, but it's, okay, well, how can we provide the most comfort, the most prosperity, the best economy, so that everybody's comfortable? And that's when we really get into this mindset of forgetting, forgetting the realities of nature. Because warfare, originally, was always waged, waged by the aristocracy, is always waged by the higher classes. And this is something Evola talks about. The warrior and priestly classes were at the top of society, but they were also the ones dying, for the civilization, whereas today you have economic elites who, who run a country but don't participate in the, the very physical and elemental dangers and risks which are necessary to keep a civilization strong, to keep a collective group strong. I think a lot of the distrust of like modern politicians and the modern political elite is, is this sort of resentment of, well, most of our military is comprised of lower economic classes with less power in society and when you have the people coming from these lower social classes fighting the wars and dying then they start to think well i'm i'm fighting and dying in this war yet i'm not at the top of society so then you also start to have a sort of demoralization of well why am i fighting right so there are all these different sort of factors to think about and to take into account when we sort of delve into the nature of war. So there's just a quick, some quick thoughts I had. As for these cigars, I recently was given quite a few cigars as, as gifts, so I don't recommend smoking often, but I got them as gifts, so I figured why not. It's, it's nice to, to walk at night and, and smoke a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. But yeah, I definitely recommend reading Evola and, and Jung's works and understanding these, these sort of truths, these realities of nature and these realities of, of human existence. Like everything we have is built off of murder and, and warfare and bloodshed. And we can't separate that from the realities of life. We can't separate the realities of life from the facade that we've created, this facade of, of comfort and security which is, is really an illusion because at any moment society could collapse and then we're back in that state of nature, that state of survival and that state of warfare. So like I said, these are just some little thoughts, but just sit with that for a second. Let's think about that. And we'll do more in-depth videos. I will do more in-depth videos later, specifically just looking at Storm of Steel and Junger's experience in World War One, And then after that, I'll also look specifically at um, Evola's, Evola's Metaphysics of War, which is, is a brilliant book, and I definitely recommend that as well. So I'll be looking in depth specifically on those books, and uh, I still have to finish the video on The Stranger, which I've been slacking on, because I know you all wanted to see some Camus. But yeah, just think about that a little bit. Think about war and, and the sort of ugly truth, the ugly realities of life that we tend to ignore. As always, though, this is Warrior Philosopher, building the foundations of the Warrior Philosophy. We'll see you next time. Jesus, this guy won't stop pulling me.